Isaiah got this revelation through the Holy Spirit that the hand of the Lord is ready to save us. God is ready to hear us. But the problem is our sins, our iniquity, our evil deeds. He cannot answer our prayers because we are sinners, because we are not true Christians. We are not serious with our salvation. Our hearts are not pure. Our mind is full. Your mind is full of all that which is evil. Look at your actions. Please, it is time that we change. Let us change. Let us change so that when you go in prayer and when you start talking to God, the Lord may hear you. topic. We are continuing with our topic of prayer. My name is Reverend Ethel Mambo. I am right here at St. John's Church, ready to start our Bible study. Please make sure you have your Bible with you, a notebook, and a pen, and God will bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for allowing us to hear your word, to study your word. And I believe with the help 
of your Holy Spirit, you shall reveal to us the important things hidden in your scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I commit everyone watching me right now under your faithful and powerful hands. Lord, I ask for forgiveness. Sanctify us with your blood. Open our inner understanding that we may be able to hear and understand your word. I bind every spirit of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. I pull down any evil thought that is trying to arise itself in this session. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray as we study this word, may the Lord visit you. As we study this word, may the Lord answer your prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, trusting and believe. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. It is another wonderful evening. And I want us to continue with our Bible study. And before we continue, I just want, to, I just want us to, to, to briefly look at what we studied last week. Remember, we, we define what prayer is. Don't forget, when you pray, you are talking to God. Don't forget, prayer is communicating. Don't forget, our God is alive. He sees, he hears, he understands, and he is willing to answer our prayer. So for every prayer that we pray, there must be a response. He is a faithful God. Remember, we learn, we learn that we should always give God time to respond to, to our prayer. Hallelujah! And we also touched on things to consider when praying. Do you remember that? It is very important to learn about prayer. It is also important to have a private place, prayer mountain. Do you remember? And even Jesus went ahead when he was teaching the disciples about prayer. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9. Before that, from verse 1, he was telling them to be aware of these mistakes. When you go before the Lord in prayer, that is where we ended last time. That you should observe your words, examine your words. We should not use many words in prayer. We should, we should avoid a lot of repetition. You see, some of us are praying, and when you have finished praying, if I ask you, what were you praying about, you cannot even explain to me. You cannot even remember what you have been praying, and yet you have spent an hour praying, two hours praying, yet after praying, you yourself cannot remember what you have prayed, what you are telling God, what you are asking God to do for you. So if you cannot remember, then how sure are you that you will be able to hear or understand when God releases an answer to you? So it is very important to look at our words. You must be specific when you go before the Lord. Please know before you, you go, you enter the presence of God, you should know what you want and go direct to your needs. Ask God if it is about healing. Then let your prayer focus on healing. Just ask God about healing. If it's about deliverance, then pray concerning deliverance. If it is about provision, make sure you quote scriptures that talk about provision. Please, it is very important to understand and to be specific when we pray. We should know what we want. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we continue, I want us to look at another point, the fifth point. We need to invite the Holy Spirit. When you pray, it is important for you to invite the Holy Spirit. Remember what the scriptures tell us in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 8. That we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon us. 
and we shall have the boldness to witness about Christ. So the Holy Spirit gives us power, not only power to preach, but also power to intercede, power to pray in the right way. So when you go, when you enter in your room, or when you go in the presence of the Lord, praying, I want, us, I want you to remember asking God to release the Holy Spirit. Keep on welcoming him, the Holy Spirit. He is a person. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I welcome you in my prayers. Holy Spirit, I invite you in my prayers. Holy Spirit, lead me. Show me how to pray. And I want us to read John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 26 to... Uh, John chapter 14, we begin with verse 26. Let us open our Bible in the book of John, John 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. What does it say? But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have sent to you. Remember, this is Jesus telling the disciples that if I go to my Father, I will send the helper, the helper, the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is to teach us. Jesus was telling the disciples, the Holy Spirit will help you. That's why he is called the helper, another name for the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and even the things that you have forgotten. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will remind you of everything that you have come forgotten. Hear me, blessed child of the Most High God. It is very important to invite the Holy Spirit when you are praying because Jesus tells us that he is the best teacher. He will teach you how to pray. We need him to guide us in prayer. We should not lean unto our own understanding. Do you remember the book of Proverbs chapter, th chapter 3? Proverbs chapter 3 tells us that we should not lean unto our own understanding, but we should put our trust to God. So when we pray, we should not rely on our understanding. We should not rely on our human ideas. We should allow the Holy Spirit, since he has the superpower, he has God himself, he has Jesus in him, he has got all the power. Jesus tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray. So we need to welcome him. Welcome the spirit of the living God. Ask him to teach you about prayer, to direct you about prayer. Lean unto him. Do not depend on your understanding, but depend on him. He is the best teacher. And the Bible, the scripture tells us that he will teach us everything, meaning including prayer. And he will remind you so when you are praying, while relying on the Holy Ghost, praying and in your heart, you know very well that it is not only you praying, but you have the helper with you praying. In the middle of your prayer, if there is anything that you have forgotten, the Holy Spirit will keep on reminding you, will keep on reminding you. That's why you, will hear you, that's why you, you realize that. Those men and women of God who are full of the power of God, they pray, they pray without getting tired because it has got nothing to do with their mind, but it has got all to do with the power of the Holy Spirit working in them. So it is the Holy Spirit showing them how to pray while in deep praying. The Holy Spirit keeps on guiding them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us look at the Lord's Prayer. Jesus went ahead to respond to, to one of his disciples who asked him to, to teach them how to pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. I want us to, to go through the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 9. When the disciples requested that Jesus teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. 
Jesus went ahead and told, and told them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. We will begin with verse 9. Pray then like this. Eh? This is how you should pray. Now, I want us to start to learn about the Holy, about the Lord's prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our Redeemer, our Creator, taught his disciples when he was here on earth. And if, according to my understanding, a disciple is anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, anyone who has given his life, who is born again, he is a disciple. And because we are Jesus' disciple, it is also our Lord's Prayer. I want us to learn the Lord's Prayer. And after learning the Lord's Prayer, we shall improve, I believe, in the areas of prayer while we go in our inner places to seek his face. Pray like this, verse 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When you begin your prayer, you begin by mentioning our Father. He, he says, he said, sorry, he said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As we read this scripture, it is very important to indicate where these prayers are going to, where this message is supposed to go. It is very important to indicate what kind of a father are we talking about? What kind of a father is supposed to release, is supposed to receive this prayer? Jesus said we should pray to our heavenly father, meaning that the God that we are approaching in prayer, he is our father. And when you read John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, for all who believe and accepted Jesus Christ became the sons of God. We are God's children through trusting and believing in Jesus Christ. So because we are the children of the living God, our God is our Father. That's why the Bible says when we pray, we should ask him and call him Father, Father, Father. These are the best names to call our God who is in heaven. My heavenly Father. Is he your Father? Is he your heavenly Father? It is very important to call him your Father. Jesus said, when you pray, Start with calling his name as a father to you, our heavenly father. Yes, he is our heavenly father because that is where God reigns. That is where the throne of God is. The throne of God is in heaven. When you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, let us turn our Bible to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then I want us to also read verse 6 to 8. And God said, let there be an expense in the midst of the water, and let it separate the waters from the waters. 
and God made the expense and separated the waters that were under the expense from the waters that were above the expense. And it was so. And God called the expense heaven. And there was evening. And there was morning. The second day. Genesis tells us that God created the heaven and the earth. And as we read the whole chapter, we realize that God prepared the earth and then he decided that you and me shall live here on earth. While him, our mighty father, shall live in heaven. And when we read verse 6 and 8, the earth was full of water. The Bible says water has covered everywhere. And then God decided to separate the waters. And when he separated the water, that's why we can see the sky. And the water that remained above, he called it heaven. So our God dwells in heaven. And that is where his throne is. That is why when we pray, it is very important to indicate where your prayers are going our heavenly father. And when you call him your father, it really touches him because God will look at you as his child. My father, I come before you. God will hear you from heaven and will look at you. He will realize that there is a son, there is a daughter calling upon his name here on earth. How do you address him? When you go before the Lord praying, how do you ad address him? Remember, Jesus told us that we should not keep on repeating words. How do you address him? He is a father to you. Our God is a father to us. We are his children. It is very important to realize this. You go before the Lord as a child, not as a businessman, a businesswoman. You want to pray like a manager because you are a manager somewhere. That is where we miss it all. We are God's children. Yes, he knows that. He is the one who has blessed you. He is the one who has blessed you where you are. I know I'm a pastor. I'm a reverend. But when I approach him, I approach him as a child. I cry to him as my father. It is very important to go before the Lord with the spirit of a child because a child is always humble to his parents. Don't approach God with your position. Don't approach God with your pride, with your wealthy. He's not after that. God is a father to us. He look unto us while in heaven. And he says, look at my children. So it is very important, Jesus said, when you go before the Lord in prayer, begin with addressing him as a father, my heavenly father. He reigns all over, but his throne is in heaven. Very important. Do you know why we should start our prayer with addressing him as a heavenly father? Because others are calling God, but they are calling on God who dwells here on earth. There are people who are worshipping stones. Others are worshipping trees. Others, their God is where ocean is. But we, the children of the most high God, our God dwells in heaven. That is where his throne is. So it is very important. When you ask, Father, help me. Father, hear me. Remember, it is very important to address him as your father and where he is. Because there are so many gods here on earth. And this verse tells us that our father who is in heaven, hallowed 
be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Another Bible reads, let thy name be kept holy. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let us look at the definition of the word hallowed. Hallowed means holy. Something that is holy. Consecrated. Sacred. So when we say our heavenly father, hallowed be thy name. We are saying that in prayer, it really means my heavenly father. How holy. How holy is your name. The name of the Lord must be kept holy. So, as we look at this verse, we realize that in the beginning of our prayer, we need to praise him. It is very important to praise him. Hallowed be your name. My heavenly Father, how holy is your name. How mighty, how powerful is your name. How able is your name. But that is not what we do. Most of us, you just go in prayer crying. You don't even start with praising him. You just ask, Father in heaven, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, please. Is that how Jesus taught us to pray? We should begin by addressing him as holy. Hallowed be your name. We should begin by praising him. If I say this is a hallowed place, I mean this is a holy place. If I say it is a hallowed ground, I mean it is a, ha it is a holy ground. So God is holy. And his name must be kept holy. That is why when we go back to things to consider before praying, we should be very careful when mentioning the word of God in prayers. We keep on repeating, God, God. You will hear others, other, other people saying, Oh my God. Eh? Mungu wangu. Eh? Be very careful. Let us keep his name holy. We should not keep on mentioning his name unnecessarily. His name is holy. So if we want God to hear our prayer, we should know that he is a holy God and his name is so powerful. That's why in the name of Jesus, sickness disappears. In the name of Jesus, demons are being cast out. In the name of Jesus, miracle happens. Because this name is so powerful. This name is so holy. So we need to praise him that he is holy. And then verse 9, sorry, verse 10. Let us go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You have already addressed him as your father. And you have praised him. He is so mighty, great, powerful, everlasting father, ancient of days. Then verse 10, tell us, talks about his kingdom. Your kingdom come. Remember this is Jesus teaching us how to pray. After that now, you start calling upon his kingdom. You see where we, we make mistakes. Before calling God's kingdom, you have already asking God to, to heal you. How will he heal you before the, his kingdom is at hand? We need to ask for his kingdom to come down. When his kingdom is with us, we will experience healing. 
We will experience his presence. We will see miracles happening. That's why Jesus went ahead and told the disciples, it is important now to ask the kingdom to come down and let your will be done on earth as it is here in heaven. I want us to discuss about the kingdom. When we talk about the kingdom, we are talking about the spiritual realm of our Lord Jesus Christ. The spiritual realm of our God. We are talking about the inhabitants of God or the place where God reigns. Let your kingdom come. Father, we need your kingdom. That place where you are reigning. The activities, the authority that is being exercised in heaven. We need that kingdom with its angels, with the Holy Spirit, with all its powers to come here on earth. How many of us, before telling God what we need, begin by requesting for the kingdom to come down? Don't you know that here on earth we have the satanic kingdom? Don't you know this is the dwelling place of the devil? The kingdom of the devil is right here on earth. And then we begin praying instead of calling his kingdom to come down and shut down the satanic kingdom, we start asking him what we need when the kingdom of Satan is really at work. Now, instead of him answering us, things begin to get worse. And we start wondering, what is happening? How comes when I pray, things are becoming more worse, more worse? Hey, have you called upon his kingdom to come down first? Have you called upon his kingdom to come down first? So, when we talk about God's kingdom, we are talking about the spiritual realm where God reigns. And when I talk about the spiritual realm, I mean the spirit world of God. Remember, God is spirit. And when we worship him, we should worship him in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. I want us to stop there. We shall continue next week. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. We will go deeper concerning his kingdom. We need his kingdom to come down before telling him our desires, before telling him what we want. Let his kingdom come down. I love you. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release a blessing to your child in the name of Jesus Christ. As he studied this word, may the power of the Holy Spirit come upon him. Speak to him, my father. Speak to him, my father. Remember, we are your children. You are our great father. We love you, Lord. You are so powerful in our life. And our best desire is your kingdom to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, may your kingdom come and perform signs and wonders in their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray, trusting, and believe. Amen. Amen. See me next week on Wednesday. God bless you. Bye. Bye.